So I think most of you guys um, have discovered that anytime you do anything that's serious metalworking-ish, it can be really hard to get a good proper C-clamp that won't bend, that won't flex, that won't just straight up break. Most of the ones out there are very poor quality. They're fair, fairly expensive for what they are. And if you want a proper heavy duty, ideally domestically made one, it's gonna cost you. Uh, the handful I've seen sell online for over 100 bucks a piece new. And so it's, it's really, really hard to find anything better than off-brand cheapies like this or off-brand cheapies rebadged re as Bessie and Irwin like this and like my Irwin one over there. It's just not a good situation. I don't know why it's so hard to find a proper C-clamp, but I'm tired of bending these things and dealing with them. So I'm just gonna make some. Basically, I got this big piece of Acme threaded rod here. This is a lot like regular threaded steel rod. However, the, uh, the threads are a lot fatter and they will evidently, and I'm not a machinist and I don't want to talk out my rear end here, and they will evidently stand up to much more abuse. You know, this is basically the same stuff that's in a proper bench vise and I recently discovered, thanks to a couple of viewers, that you can buy this stuff fairly inexpensively online. This is, I want to say, one inch diameter. Don't quote me on that. I ordered it like three weeks ago. It's uh, domestically produced. It is Rockwell hardness of like 80 or 100 or so. And it was only like 50, 60 bucks for this and the nuts and shipping. So yeah, I got that. And I also have some half inch steel flat bar stock here. This is some half inch by four material. It's uh, pretty substantial. And I'm going to be making two C clamps out of this. So, you know, a C-clamp is about as complicated and as hard to understand as a hammer, so most of you guys can probably already guess I'm going to be going about this. So let's uh, fire up the chop saw and hopefully we'll no longer be stuck in a position of crappy C-clamps. Now, to state the obvious, these things are going to be large and they're going to be heavy. Now, for me, that's great because I do pretty much everything in the shop here, but if you're looking for something to take on the road or whatever, it might not be the best option. But I want these things to be large and heavy. I want them to be rigid, sturdy, and I want them to be built to last a lifetime or ideally more. So let's uh, get to work here. tip for you guys. You can see I've got a uh, pretty good chunk of this material cut out. All I have left is to cut out this piece and this piece out of this easily maneuverable short bar of steel. So one slight time saving tip that I've picked up is uh, so what I need out of this is a pair of 11 inch pieces. So instead of marking this out to 11 inches, cutting it, waiting for everything to you know settle and getting my tools and marking out the next 11 inch thing, I'm just going to cut here, then I'm going to cut here and then my scrap is in the middle. This just saves me from having to wander over and get my tools and like switch functions of myself. It's a small thing, but you do it a few times over, I don't know, a, a long welding career, it really adds up to save you some time. Now obviously, the caveat to this is that if you're doing it with something huge, it's not gonna make sense to like flip around the 20 foot I-beam for instance, but with something this short, it's, uh, it's the way to go here in my opinion. And this section is, uh, is going to be my scrap metal this is what we want, and of course for safety's sake, we want to wait for the saw to, uh, as we would under any circumstances, come to a complete stop here. Alright, so as you can see, we've got everything laid out here, at least out of that uh, half inch strip of material. And I've decided that I want to make these C-clamps in two different sizes. So I have a smaller-ish one and then a larger-ish one. 
And uh, so, yeah, then we have to figure out the rest of this design. All right, so as you can see, I've got our uh, six-piece material laid out here, and I'm just gonna explain the basic design of this. So these bottom pieces are what I refer to as the anvil, and they are this part of the C-clamp right here. These are an inch longer than these upper pieces, although that probably won't show up on camera too well. And then up here, we're actually gonna end up taking the plasma cutter and cutting out this section so you can access the top of uh, you know, this section up here, because otherwise, if you mounted it like such, you, know, you wouldn't really be able to turn anything past the end of this material. So we're gonna be drilling a 15 16 hole and uh, half inch thick mild steel, and we gotta drill a lot of them here. All up and down this thing, all up and down that thing. I've offset these holes by an inch in each direction so they're not too close together, and so that we're not missing that much material. But it's basically the same concept as these, uh, I guess you could call them lightning cuts in the castings when they made this C-clamp. So if we manage this, it'll look a lot better, it'll be a little lighter, and, um, and it's gonna be all for the best and they'll be a lot less ugly, unlike most things I build. So, let's fire up the mag drill. So now what we have to do is deburr these holes since we got them all nice and drilled out. And to do this, I'm just going to use a one-inch chamfering tool. Now there's not a whole lot of chamfering going on here because uh, you know these are 15, 16 holes, of course. So you know it's mainly just going to ream out this little burr right around here. But honestly, be between the quality of those cutters and the quality of the steel, there's not really much of a burr in the first place. But still, we'll clean it up a little. Not bad for like two man hours worth of drilling, you two. Oh, look at that, all stick together. You wear like a wig. All right, so now we're gonna take the old seven inch grinder here and bevel the sides of, I guess, the main part of this thing, the section that's gonna run per uh, parallel to our Acme lead screw here. So, yeah, nothing too fun to do it. Like I always say, it's not every day you need a big 7-inch grinder, but when you have to bevel half-inch plate, it sure is nice to have. I like how the lights flicker in the building when I start this thing. We have stuff bouncing off these clamps. I'm going to grab a big deal.
if I got this marked out right, because if not, there's, uh, there's no fix in this one. So it took like a full 24 hours for the uh, spray paint to dry because it's so humid lately. But uh, now it is, so we're just gonna put in these uh, threaded sections. Now I thought about painting these, I decided against it because you know there's not really a whole lot of clearance in this as is. And if I add paint to the equation, then there's gonna be even less. So I got that and uh, the way these things are set up, you know, if you're just gonna move this screw in and out, it's really easy to do with your hand like such, and you can put light clamping pressure on things. However, if you need serious clamping pressure, there's this uh, DIY homemade wrench which I put together. Just cut this out on the uh, plasma cam machine. Hypertherm made quick work of this half inch plate, and it's, uh, it's obviously not hardened steel or anything, so gotta be somewhat careful about what I use it for. But for something like this, it is a tool for the job. And I chose this over a store-bought wrench, partially because I don't really know where to even go buy a one in five ace wrench. It's an odd size, it's a larger size. And partially because this is short, which can be a, a very important feature of something like this. So when you really go to clamp down on something, you just take this, spin it around like such, and uh, it's really easy to just clamp down that large screw there. So. We got that going on there, and over here, just gotta take half the day and thread this thing all the way down. I was thinking my plasma cam can't really handle a job that big, but if someone had like a large 4x8 CNC plasma machine, and you bought like a like a 4x8 sheet of this half inch plate, which around me is about 500 bucks, you could get a lot of these clamps out of that. You just pay a couple of trigger pullers, 10, 12 bucks an hour to zap the, uh, the Acme nuts on, and you can crank these things out pretty cheap. So if anybody has a big CNC table and wants a million dollar idea, there you go. All right, so we're finally getting there. This is uh, obviously a very large clamp and you know, built it that way intentionally, but the downside is when you have to put the lead screw from all the way in to all the way out, that can take a little while. So uh, cranking on this, if just doing it by hand or using my homemade wrench won't work, I can use this. This is a three quarter inch drive socket. Uh, and I have my three quarter inch ratchet for this. And also just a few days ago, I ordered a one inch drive impact wrench. So hopefully in the next week or so after this video posts, I'll have a video to post about that. Believe it or not, I already have the sockets for the stupid thing and the adapters. I have everything except the wrench itself. But that's what happens when you buy on eBay. Sometimes the seller decides they want to take all day. But anyway, um, yeah, we're almost there. Holy cow. So, uh, a couple other design points of this. I designed it so that this lead screw will come down and touch this, what I refer to as the anvil here, but just barely. If you look, we got contact there, and if you look at this end, there's like less than an eighth of an inch between this nut and that one. So I built these to be fairly precise. Now, in terms of the thing that actually contacts your workpiece, uh, here I'll demonstrate it on this one because it's a little shorter. In terms of that, there's these two large nuts. These are Acme nuts, they're just like these. And uh, the thing about these is, these are essentially the, I'll call it a base plate. And the advantage to this, at least the way this works in my mind, is when we go to clamp down on something, like this piece of scrap tube, then all we do is we set this nut so it's just barely engaging and it should stay about in place as we uh, crank down on this, it'll hold the work in place as well. So, just put my one and five eighths wrench on this nut here. 
Look at that, nuts not spinning. I think this performs much better than the store-bought C-clamps where you're trying not to twist that goofy little press-down thing they have that falls off and you lose it. And then with that gone, your lead screw just wanders everywhere. I mean, that's not going anywhere. I think we're out of this. Uh, I think we're just about out of threads inside that nut. But I mean, we are crushing this piece of tube. I'm gonna flip this over so we can kind of see. I mean, look at that. That's some pretty serious clamping pressure. I don't think I could do this with any store-bought C-clamp I've ever used. And that was pretty easy. I mean, that just mashed it. And that was with moderate pressure on my homemade wrench. If I put the three-quarter inch breaker bar on there, we could, we could get some hydraulic press channel type action going in here. All right, so now what we have to do is kind of squeeze this over the, uh, the other side, the bottom of this thing. It's, it's a fairly precise fitment and it's, it's a little wavy down the side, so we, we just kind of have to get it to pop once. It's like putting a bead on a tire. So that's the, uh, the bad news. The good news is we have to try out these. This is, uh, there's actually two of another one still over there. These are my homemade DIY C-clamps which is good because earlier I tried to secure the bottom of this thing with this piece of junk Bessie clamp. I mean, look at that. It's like So we're completely missing one part. It just fell off one day and the whole thing's all like cattywampus cocked over sideways. So total junk. So yeah, glad I don't have to use store-bought C-clamps anymore. Oh, this is exciting. I don't normally like to run things down like that, but I mean, when, you, when it's almost impossible to buy a decent uh, C-clamp in the store, so it's, it's a little frustrating. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of tension on this, and then hopefully we can wiggle this around and pry on it as needed, and then it'll just pop into place. At least that's that's what I'm trying for. If we're not careful with this clamp, with all the pressure it can exert, we can actually smash this entire tube down. So we don't quite want to do that. Okay, it's really close. It's close to popping over this lip already. I'm so glad I built this thing. I really try not to talk myself up too much, but I, uh, I'm pretty proud of these C-clamps. Okay. It's over here, if you see this, it's just popped in. Oh, there it goes some more. Now our C clamp is done. We're over the lip. You, we're over the lip. Now I'm gonna smash this down a little to hold it in place. Ah, I can hear stuff popping and moving. It's a good sign. Look at this. This is what we want. When we started, the uh, you guys, we can't see this. This piece of plate was like way up here, and it wouldn't go over this. And now what we're gonna do is put a nice fillet weld right up in here, so it's gonna be hopefully nice and sturdy. So, yeah, uh, really, really like how this turned out. I love it. I don't want to talk myself up too much, but I, I don't think I've ever so much as seen a C-clamp that's this, uh, this sturdy and this rigid and this capable before. I mean, I can use these to press things. I can use these to fabricate stuff. Um, they're made right here. They're not cheaply made. No corners were cut. And uh, so, like I said, I don't want to talk myself up too much, but I'm really proud of these. I think they turned out every bit as well as I hoped they would. And uh, so yeah, I'm sure they're going to be in a lot of videos to come because I would not have bothered to build them otherwise. So thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more.